Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build. Today is a shop infrastructure build that I've been thinking about for a long time and I've been putting off for a long time. Um, you know my lovely toolbox and hardware store kind of setup here. Um, it works really great for me. I have things like when I have blades, I have made custom foam core inserts for them. Um, and for Allen wrenches and things like that so that everything is ordered and in its place. But some of the drawers in here are not so happy. For instance, this one here, I don't even know what's going on in there. Uh, and the bottom two drawers, air tools, are also, well, that was an attempt to make a dent, but this, this will not do. No, so. I am going to do a thing. I am going to uh, allocate three drawers of this of, of this for air tools, and I'm going to make a place for everything. I have all the air tools I need. I don't need any more. I, I don't need to add to this collection. I, I haven't added to it in a long time, but I've got a lovely selection, and frankly, sometimes it's actually hard for me to get to what I need because it's such a disgusting jumble. So that's today's one day build. I'm going to build some new shelf inserts for three drawers here so that my air tools all have proper homes. Let's get started. Okay, ah. well, the three drawers are empty. They're all the same size, but they're not all the same height. Uh, I've got one that goes to about three and a half, two that go to three and a half, and one that goes to five and a half. And the critical dimensions here to get these in are, let's see, 15 and 3 quarters. That's correct. Right here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, actually, 16. Yeah. We could say that that is a 16. Let's say 15 and 7 eighths. No, no, that's 16 by 22. 16 by 22. That is the three floors. 16 by 22. I need three pieces cut to that, and then I'll build up the sides, and then I'll start to figure out where the tools all go and build the separators. Here we go. have some relatively cheap wood for this. I don't want to use some really awesome stuff. Foam core. That's what we'll do. I got a lot of that. Yep. 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 Okay. Let's 
There's nothing worse than making a drawer insert that's too big for the drawer. So I am slowly just gluing together uh, these three box trays, as it were. I'm gonna make sure they fit in each of the drawers. And then once I do that, then I can start to place the air tools in them with all their resulting hardware that they might need and make sure that everything fits. Oh, this is last bit of glue. Ah, all right. Um, yeah. This is, uh, I know I said I wanted to build this out of plywood, but I didn't have the plywood that I needed. I wasn't willing to wait a couple days. And to be honest, this foam core should probably last for years. Anyway, the previous one did. It's a little ratty, but yeah, it totally survived. Plus I'm using a cleaner table saw blade to cut the foam core than I did the last time I made it. The last time all my foam core was furry. That is the actual cut lines were super uh, furry. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah, like little tendrils of the paper sticking out. And I'm going in and I'm reinforcing these corners once they're set. And that just means that the box is that much more solid. All right. There's one down. And when doing, box, bo, bu, 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 when doing box construction, you save all these little cutoffs because they can help you uh, make the separators later. There we go. Hot glue, while very limited in its actual permanent utility, is maybe one of the most important maker tools there is. I mean, theater lives and dies on hot glue. So does the film industry, yeah. side. Yep. You're waiting for glue to dry in real time. Got hot glue on your finger? All right, I'm gonna show you something. That's fresh hot glue right there. That's like napalm. You get that on your finger, it's gonna burn you. But if you rub it really quickly, you increase its surface area radically. There you go. And it didn't burn me. Yeah, so you get a little bit on your finger, just rub it immediately, immediately. That's how to deal with a hot glue burn. Man, hot glue burn. That can really 
wreck your persuasion. All right. Let's test it. a little bit. That's great. That is a nice tight fit. Good. Okay. Yeah. This one. There we go. Again. Nice. Good. That will turn there like that. Close. Beauty. Come on. Come on. Come back. Huh. Yeah, well, when these go in, they're going in tight. Okay. And the last one. Yeah, craftsman drawers have these little levers on the side. One goes up, one goes down. Uh, and that's how you pull the drawers out farther than their allotment. Okay. I've got, I've got my inserts. I've got my inserts. It's time to fill them with air tools. drawer is done, the bottom drawer, and I want to talk a little bit about, you got to watch it on time-lapse, or you're watching it right now on time-lapse, and note that the way I'm putting this together is not that I'm making a monolithic plan and then gluing everything down to that plan. I have drawn in pencil where I want the tools to go, and then I am moving from one side to the other, locking in the pieces and then sort of organically figuring out where everything goes on top of that. Um, and I'm actually leaving a little room. Uh, when you are customizing a drawer like this, you don't wanna, you don't wanna lock yourself too deeply into just one mode of storing everything, because you may get more of these. You may have, uh, you know, you may replace a tool at some point. You don't wanna have to rebuild the entire thing. The other thing I did, which you might have noticed, is I raised the platforms and I lowered the walls. So for the big one, the, the air riveter, I have a full five and a quarter inch deep wall, but for the other tools, I have smaller walls because I don't need them to be so hard to get. They don't have to play hard to get. Uh, but I, I have both of my impact wrenches, my carving tool and rivet setters, uh, blowers and air riveter in here. Uh, I'm gonna put it, uh, behind me and I'm going to start on the second drawer and I'll kind of talk through my philosophy of that as I go. So, there's one down. Oh, here comes a second one. Sanders, cutoff wheel, and die grinders. Okay, so first things first, I need a bunch of the walls and I'm not going to go the full depth here. I'm only going to go, let's see, I really only need to go to about this right, at the most, which is, yeah, it's like a full, it's a half inch shallower. So let me uh, put this aside and I'll cut some walls that are exactly that high, and then I will organically work it from there. So, all the scrap over here. Wait a second, where's the scrap with my size on it? There it is. And what is that? Two and three quarters. Yeah, okay, so that's a half inch narrower than the other ones. That's great. 
And I'm gonna do two whole drawers and I don't have a ton of this stuff. So I'm gonna make some. cuts on the table saw that's where you get into trouble it's where everybody gets into trouble got to be vigilant when you're doing the repetitive work you got to have your mind sharp okay all right there we go that's it yeah mm -hmm. all right yeah but like that mm -hmm. so a bunch of walls and I am just going to like I'm gonna eyeball I'm doing a lot of eyeballing here like like you know ballpark close enough eyeballing and it really is plenty so let's see for this one let's go to there and then actually that one could just be a straight up and down Pop that in. To an edge and a side and bring it in. So that is one die grinder. Now, I think I can come straight across here and go right to there. So again, I'm just like, you know, this kind of organic build is always about like taking care of the low hanging fruit. So I'm gonna do glue there, glue there, and there. And that way, I sock it in. Yeah, that's great. I mean, look, you can get super, persnickety about this stuff, but you don't have to be. That's what I'm saying here. I'm saying that you can, uh, I'm saying that uh, you can kind of go with the flow and that's not so bad. Okay, so this one's gonna go all the way to there. And then No, that's got to do that. Okay, so if that one, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. the next van. Uh, also, I'm not saying that you have to build it this way. I'm just saying this is the way I prefer to build stuff like this because I can tend to find doing the, I need to be dynamically sizing. That's really the, the, the gist of this, All right? So I may have to, oh no, it's from that side. Okay. So like dynamically sizing this means that I don't end up building something and then taking a look at it and realizing I screwed it up in some abiding and centralized way. So that is to that, that is to that, and then I just cut that and then we have our piece. Um, yeah, I find this way of building to be, uh, I really prefer it. See that? Now, yeah, we're making progress. So I'm just gonna do the bottoms of these, of this sectioned piece.
And like, I build like this because this is how I think. Um, some people really prefer to build with a structured formal plan and they build beautiful things that way. And they should. And sometimes I do too. Sometimes I just like to be winging it. So now we've got a nice little solid shimagagi going on. I want to separate out these two die grinders. Oh, right, I've got this third die grinder here. Nope, too small. Okay. Maybe I just do that. Maybe that's enough. I mean, getting dull. Great. Yeah, much better. Much better. All right. Again, I only do the bottom for a tight fitting like this, and then I do the upright sides once it's in place. Hey! this little space right here and it's too deep and if I put stuff in there I will never find it I will never get to it because I will not want to dive in and go get it so I am going to make an insert that fits in there like this and I'm going to stand it off so, I'm going to do like this. Oh, whoops. Okay, so I'm going to bend this angle here. I'm going to put it on the back of this. Now I've got a little table. Yep. Then, I'm going to glue the bottom of this table. And I'm going to suck it right in here. Look at that. Now I've got a bottom, see that? And when I go around and I do the edges, oh, this is great. The thing is, is this is a temporary solution that can easily last for years. That's why I like it. Like I said, my previous sort for this lasted for a really long time. Okay, so you're gonna go from here to there. Backside. And glorious. Excellent. Okay, so sock that in. And you see, like, I don't know. This feels to me kind of like drawing in three dimensions. And it's why I love foam core and hot glue, because you can literally sculpt in them. Hi. Right. Ah, oh, so nice and tight. I'm really digging it. Mm. Now, this uh, hot glue has set. What can I put there? I can put the little collets that I have for the die grinder and they can live there. Look at that. OK. 
Okay. Time to add some more things. Uh, right, okay, it's these guys here. I'm not building it like this so you imitate the way that I build it, but I am just showing you options for a very organic way of putting stuff together. Um, yeah, so here we go. Again, I'll glue just the bottoms of this and I'll glue the upright sides. Then I don't have to worry about, you know, when you glue all the parts of something and then you set it in, you can like rub glue all over the sides of your piece and then it gets all gross and, and you feel like you weren't very confident. Okay, now I'm projecting, but you know what I mean. Hey, look at that. Finger sander lives there like it was always meant to be. Do the uprights there. Right. I'm gonna strengthen this corner. Sometimes the cut corners can be a little weak. And I think I just need one long straight across there. Yeah. You know, uh, what I really like about these builds is during the tedium when I'm running a time lapse, I can actually listen to some music in the shop. Yeah, it's quite nice. So we put this in there. I'm gonna give it a little bit of space. Yep, all right. And you can see how quickly this is coming together. It's real how much speed you can organize using this technique. The other thing about having a space for a tool where it's supposed to live, and I may actually paint big numbers on these tools so that other people using the shop can figure out where everything Hey, so I thought I was recording that whole time. I've been keeping up a monologue about this entire thing and you guys didn't get to see any of it. So I'm gonna do it again for the last drawer so that you can see what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, I sort of walked through the philosophy of how I put these drawers together, but again, you didn't see any of it because I forgot to press record. So that's gonna happen next once I finish this drawer. Good, good, good. Right, and then I'm gonna want that to go across, yes. Mainly what I was discussing here was just how easy it is to build stuff organically like this. Um, yeah, there's like, you know, there's a lot of latitude uh, with foam core and hot glue. And to be honest, if I was gonna make this out of plywood, I mean, I know I work in plywood also pretty fast, but uh, I think I might mock it up first in the hot glue just to see, there we go. And we got some tools over here that need some help. I'm just like socking in little pieces of these off cuts as I need them, right? Cause I end up with so many you can just start using them. I know, this is where I get like Bob Rossi. Bob Ross E. Okay. 
these tools, they shouldn't live all the way at the bottom of a thing because I'll never get them out. And put that right there. There we go. Second drawer is done. And uh, I am going to uh, add some strength to it. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good too. Um, and we'll start walking through the third drawer's philosophy and then we'll put them on in. All right. So this drawer is my nibblers, my cutters, ah, my nibblers, my cutters, my uh, bone saws, bone saw. I don't have to say it like that. It's just kind of cool. Uh, right, so uh, first I need more dividers. And I don't know if I need to go this high. I think I could actually go a little lower. I think I could go, what height is this? Is this this height? I think I could go with that height. Okay, we're gonna go this one lower than any of the others. So, put this here. Thank you. Thank you for saying bless you. I heard you through the TV. An excellent practice with your table saw is to lower the blade every single time you're done using it. Uh, okay, so now let's get some dividers in here. Oh, those are, wow. Well, yep, that's them all perfectly. So. Go. Uh, and I'm just going to move from one side to the other here, assembling the sorting interior. Uh, and you will find there are times when you're doing a project like this where you lose space because you didn't accommodate for something, and where you gain space because you didn't realize how efficiently you could make something occur. So right there, that's you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Straight enough to my eye is straight enough for me. All it's meant to do is to separate things so I can see them visually. And thus when I, when my time comes that I need them, I can locate them as fast as possible. So, to that to that. Lovely. That's great. I will do one more. Yeah, great. Okay, so I'm really happy with those three dividers. Now I need a long one to come all the way across the top here. Yep, and so that's gonna cut right across. And I'm gonna just mark it there. Yeah, uh, nice. All right, okay, here. I'm just gonna do this whole bottom edge. Oh, it takes a, aw, oh, I wanted to do that piece of camera with a pencil in my mouth. It takes a steady hand to get the hot glue all the way down. But you can go slowly, you've got time. Hot glue sets quickly, but not that quickly. Go. We are four hot glue sticks into this project already. We've got three of my beautiful bone saws. These are reciprocating saws. Ooh, they sound like an electric shaver. They're amazing. Then I've got, uh, right, I've got a nibbler. That can't go there. Yeah, yep. Okay, so. That's gonna do that, and it's gonna go to there, and then it's gonna come on up. Come on up! And then once it comes on up, it's gonna shot right there. Now, I know I'm moving all the way to the other side, but that's also because I can see really clearly that this is the only place that this one can really go. So, right, so like, that's where that one goes. That's how that lives. And that's a great way for me to start on the other side. Just marking my thing. And again, 
I'll do just the bottom and I'll do the edges once it's in. The vertical, sorry. There we go. This one's going to be a great drawer because I end up with a lot of extra space after I'm done with this drawer and I'm going to end up using it. This is a good, ah, this is a good place for extra hardware for air tools and things. So now it's time for me to get in this business. I think I can do that. Yeah, cool. Just have that one come all the way across. And I'm going to do it like that because that hides that bent corner. Again, I'm not, this isn't an instruction that you should build your drawer inserts like I am. I'm just showing you a super organic methodology that I find more fun than sitting and like sometimes I like doing lots of drawings. Sometimes I really enjoy that. Sometimes I just want to get the bloody thing done, you know? Sometimes it's just, I just want to get it so that I can use it. And that's why this method, even as a scratch building like test method, works so great for me. All right, so. To me, it's like sketching. There is some room that can actually coexist. And then this guy would come in here and separate here. Grabbing the pencils. I will grab both of those because now I am pencil free. One hundred percent pencil free. Radio. Yeah, there we go. Okay, upright and the vertical. Put the glue up there. Yeah, you need to go right. You are the one that goes there. Also, sometimes when these are super organic looking, I find that it makes me smile each time I open the drawer. That's really true. Yeah, see that? That's like, it just feels like I'm looking at, well, I am. I'm looking at my own craft project, you know? And I'm remembering putting it together. Strengthen the corners where you can. See, this is the kind of tool stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, these are all the little wrenches and air tools and stuff. I also have some um, of my, yeah. I've got some of the saw blades, so I'm gonna separate those out. Give them their own compartment so they don't cross pollinate with the other craft. I have one more separator to put in, and it's here. And I think I can do a big diagonal. Look at that. I think that's great. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, that's just, 
that is really nice. I can get to each thing really easily. It all is clearly delineated where it goes. Oh. Ladies and germs, we have some drawer inserts. I'm gonna strengthen this up here. Just give it a little more hot gluey glue. In there. In there. Yeah. Awesome. I'm really pleased with how this all came out. Um, I'll put them in the drawers. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is the moment of fruit. Um, don't need that. I'm going to just pull this drawer out a little bit. Yep. And I'm going to lower this down into it. And I don't believe. Yep. Oh. There we are, ladies and germs. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, place for everything and everything in its place. And even a blank spot, a blank spot where I can store stuff later. Oh, glorious. All right, actually I could put those two springs there. All right, next one. Again, the finger sanders have their place. Yes, they do. And now, this one, the new air tools drawer. By the way, I'm gonna scrape off. Oh. Yeah. Scraping, taking off what was listed to be there. And I'll draw air tools on there. But first. This one's got to go in. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, glorious. Ladies and gentlemen, ah, oh, the benefits of living righteously. I, I don't know what I mean by that. So, time for labeling. This would be Air tools. This would be, I'm going to write, here we go. Air tools. Okay, so this is air tools one. This is air tools two. This is Air Tools 3. This will become more important later when I'm making a really complete inventory for each of the things that are in the shop. But in here I have reciprocating. Die grinders! I can't do the bottom one, not just yet. Oh. Let's take a little tour and see these things up close. All right, Air, Trues, Air Tools door number one. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We've got some blades and some tools. We've got the cylindrical sander, drum sander, sanders, nibblers and cutters. Reciprocating saws, then we have air tools too. Oh, look at this. We have the finger sanders and the cutoff wheel and the 
Schrader valve fillers and the die grinders and the belts and the, yeah. And then Air Tools 3. We have the air powered pop riveter, one of my all time favorite tools. My two impact wrenches, my carving impact tools and their various business ends, blowers, and some extra bits and bobs and parts. <sighs> that is a very happy, happy toolbox. I will say this business is a little bit of a sorry business and that's gonna be one of the drawers I take care of very soon. All right, thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I am so happy to have my air tools in three drawers so that they're not all bunched together like a junkyard full of air tools. It is, it's a nice future now that I know where everything is and where everything has a home. That's always the goal, that everything has a place to go to. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching that entire video. You are amazing. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that you can now show your tested solidarity with some tested merch like this beautiful, beautiful drawing of the rickshaw that I built for Spot. This drawing was made in conjunction with the artists at Teespring and you can buy the t-shirt in the link down below. Um, yeah. I didn't know that my life was incomplete without a funereal, charnel, black Victorian rickshaw to be dragged by my robot dog, and yet that was the case. And now you can have your own piece of this lovely, lovely carriage uh, and wear it on your body. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.